When it comes to coach builders, Italy is the most known place. With such names as Bertone, Zagato, Pininfarina, Italy has brought to us some of the most beautiful cars of all time. But among these big names there were a lot of small coach builders, which time has forgot. Such designer is Pietro Frua. Founder of Carrozzeria Frua, Pietro had some very beautiful car. But sadly, most of his creations were small production or just never entered production. So hello guys and welcome back to another video. And here is the profile of Pietro Frua. Pietro Frua was born on May 2, 1913 in Torino, Italy. Living in Torino and being the son of a Fiat employee, Pietro was raised with passion and love about cars. In 1930 he started studying for draftsmen at the Allievi Fiat School. Later that year Pietro started working for Stablimenti Farina. Stablimenti Farina was a coach builder of the time which was founded by Giovanni Farina, the older brother of Battista Pinin Farina. Battista worked for a long time for his brother, and in 1930 he left in order to create his own coach building house, Pinin Farina. Also in the 30s, Felice Mario Boano and Giovanni Michelotti were part of Stablimenti Farina, so they were a very talented team. Frua worked with some of the cars that Farina presented, and in 1937 he became the general manager of Stablimenti Farina. In 1939 Pietro decided to leave to pursue his ventures. After he left Farina, Pietro worked for a short time for Officine Viberti, a bus and truck maker. But with the beginning of the Second World War he started working independently. Mostly he designed children cars and kitchen suppliers. He also worked with the design of Belmondo Simat, which led to the creation of Piaggio MP5 Paperino, the predecessor of Vespa. In 1944 Pietro decided to buy a bombed out factory, so he could start building his cars. He established Carrozzeria Pietro Frua, and he employed 15 people, including here a young Sergio Cogiola. The first car of Carrozzeria Pietro Frua came in 1946. The Fiat 1100A Sport Barchetta was based on a first generation Fiat 1100. The power came from a straight 4 1089cc engine, with something more than 32 horsepowers. Considering the fact that the car was ultra lightweight, the A Sport Barchetta probably was a fun car. The 1100 Sport Barchetta was followed by a number of other projects. Some of them were Lancia Austra Coupe, Lancia Prilla Giardinetta and Lancia Prilla Giardinetta Seconda. Sadly not much is known about his early works, with a big lack of information and pictures. But in the 50s a number of different Italian car makers approached Frua. Cisitalia was one of these car makers. Personally, I'm a big fan of Cis Italia, and I really want to make a video about them. Sadly, I don't have enough information at this moment. After becoming a successful team on Grand Prix racing, Cis Italia was trying to make it as a car maker, and so they were working with a number of different coach builders to create something impressive. And the 202 Spider is what Pietro Frua came up. The car was based on a Cisitalia 202, which was designed in 1947 by Pininfarina. Sadly, not much is known about this car. In 1951 came the Maserati A6G2000 Spider. Based on an A6G2000, which came in 1950, Spider Frua was one of the three models that were presented that year. The other two were a Coupe and another Spider, which were designed by Pininfarina. 
Later, Frua also designed Occupé A6G2000. The A6G was followed by a number of other cars, like the Oscar MT4 2AD Coupé Le Mans, Fiat Coupé Dingy, Lancia Aurelia Hatchback, Panhard DB850 Coupé, Oscar 2000S Spider, Peugeot 203 Cales Cabriolet, Peugeot 203 Coupé, Fiat 600 Multipla and 3 Maseratis, 2 A6Gs and the 1500 GT Fantuzzi Spider. In 1957, Pietro decided to sell his firm to Ghia and he was appointed head of Ghia. While he worked for Ghia, he designed the renowned Daphne Coupé, differently from his previous cars became quite successful. But after a number of disagreements, Pietro decided to leave to create again his own design house. Now Frua was an established designer and so more car makers wanted to work with him. And the 60s really were the golden years of Frua, since his most known creations came from this period. One of the first cars that he designed were after the departure from Ghia were the Coupé and the convertible version of the Citroën DS. Both were very beautiful cars and definitely should have been made. In 1961, Frua presented his take on the Maserati 3500 GT. Like with a car that replaced the A6G, the 3500 came with a number of different bodies, which were designed by different coach builders. The Frua ones are some of the rarest, since only four were built, including here the convertibles. After the 3500 came the Ford Angela Spider, Maserati 5000 GT Aga Khan, and Ford Galaxy. In 1964 came another quite successful car, like Cheese Italia, Glass also deserved a story of video, since they have built some very beautiful cars. Anyway, Pietro designed a GT for Glass, which was a small car, like many car makers were building at the time. The Glass GT was quite successful car, since over 5000 cars were built. In 1967 Glass was bought by BMW and 1500 more glass were built as BMWs. The GT Coupé was followed by, another, by the Cabriolet one year later. The glass GT was followed by another beautiful Maserati. Originally named the Due Posti, the Mistral was, re was the replacement of the 3500. The Mistral is the last Maserati to use a straight 6 engine, since later they moved into the V8s. The Mistral is definitely one of the most beautiful Maseratis of all time. Under the beautiful body was a straight 6 engine, which was a relative of the engine that Maserati was using on their F1 cars. The Mistral came with three different engines, a 3.5 liter with 235 horsepower, a 3.7 liter with 245 horsepower, and the top of the range 4 liter with 255 horsepower. That same year, Pietro also designed another Maserati, the original Quattroporte. The Quattroporte is definitely one of the most important Maseratis ever, since the saloon model is, is their most successful car. The style was quite similar with other Maseratis of, of the time, especially with the Frua designed ones. The Quattroporte was, was one of the first sports sedans. The V8 engine produced 255 horsepower on the 4.1 liter version and 285 horsepower on the 4.7 liter one. This power helps the car to reach a top speed of over 250 km per hour on the latter one. The Quattroporte was followed by a coupé, version of the Lotus Elan, a convertible version of the Maserati Mistral and a convertible version of the Opel Cadet. In 1965, Frua presented another impressive car, this time for AC. The car looked a bit like the ISO Rivolta, but again quite different. Like ISO and many cars of the time, the AC428 was powered by an American V8 engine, a Ford 7 liter engine with 345 horsepower. The car was very expensive, since AC built a chassis in UK, shipped them in Italy for the body and later the bodies were returned in UK where they received the engine and all the other mechanical parts. Only 81 Ford 28s were built, where 49 were, were coupes, 29 convertibles and 3 special bodies. After the AC came the Glass V8, 
Class GT Vietzer and the Maserati 37 GT Coupe. In 1966 came a special Jaguar E-Type. The car doesn't look very different compared to the regular E-Type. Froa was asked by John Kumbus to give the E-Type an Italian look. Didn't have much time to work with the car, so he only changed the nose. John wasn't satisfied with this, so he asked Ital House to pack the car with a big chrome bumpers. The E-Type was followed by another Jag, this time a rebodied S-Type. Now the car had a two-door body, completely different from the one that the original car had. The S-Type Coupe looks very good in my opinion, sadly the car wasn't meant for production. Also in 1966 came another very interesting car. Now if you saw my previous video you probably know that I love shooting brakes and I definitely love this car. Not much is known about this, uh, this car, but probably was built for a special request. The SLX, how the car was named, was based on a 230SL and was only a one-off. I would have loved seeing this car going into production. In 1967 came another beautiful car by Frua. Like I mentioned before, BMW bought glass, so with the new cars that they acquired, they started experimenting with the hope of making some of these cars a reality. Such car was the BMW 3000 V8 Fastback Coupe. Based on a glass 3000 V8, the car had received a very beautiful body, which, even though it had a BMW badge, had nothing in common with other beamers of the time. BMW was looking to make this car a, re a reality, but all the plans were cancelled and they decided to go with a 3.0 CS. Now, collaboration between BMW and Frua didn't stop here. One year later, they presented the 2000 Ti Fastback. Originally, the car was built for Monteverdi and was based on a BMW 2000 Ti. This because, besides selling his cars, Monteverdi was also a BMW dealer. Monteverdi really wanted to produce this car, but BMW didn't agree with this since they saw Monteverdi as a competitor. Because of some problems with Pietro, Monteverdi decided to cut ties also with Frua. Looking to build the car, Frua decided to batch the car as a BMW, and he showed it again later that year. Sadly, BMW showed no interest. This is another missed opportunity on the log list of BMW concepts, in my opinion. Also that year, Frua presented the Chevrolet Camaro CS Coupe. Based on a SS327, the car had received a new body, which looked completely different from the original car. The car might have been quite successful as a small production car, similar with the Isos and Di Tommasos of the time. In 1968, Frua was contacted by Volvo to, to create a state version of the P1800. Beside Frua, Volvo also contacted Kojola. Both designers came up with their own special designs, which were completely different from each other. Kojola completely rebodied the car and changed everything, while Frua only changed the rear end. He named the car Rocket, since the rear gave the car a rocket look. Volvo rejected both designs, since they looked too futuristic for Volvo at the time. Instead, Volvo decided to go with an in-house design made by, by Jean Wilsgaard, which I think looks the best, since the Kojula looked completely different from the P1800 and the Frua looked too dramatic. Some of the cars that came in 1969 were the AC429 Coupé, BMW 2002 GT4 Coupé, BMW 2800 GTS Coupé, a special body Maserati Mexico Coupé, and the concept for Maserati Bora. In the 70s, Frua designed some of his best works, and one of the best came in 1970. This time, he used the Dodge Challenger RTSC as a base for his creation. The car shared a similar style with Pietro's other creations. The car was a one-off and was built for a special request. A similar style was also used for Opel Diplomat CD Coupé, which, differently from the others, made it into a limited production. The Opel was followed by a special body at Ford Monte Carlo GT, a Hispano Almen based on a Porsche 914 6, 
a special body Maserati quattro porte and the Audi 100 S Coupe Speciale. Most of the cars that came around this time shared a similar design style with each other, so I'm not going to talk about those, since not much information exists about them. One of Pietro's last works is also one of the most interesting ones. The Lamborghini Faena was based on a stretched Espada chassis. The Faena was the first four-door Lamborghini, since the LM002 only came in 1986. The car looked awesome in my opinion, but sadly most of the people didn't like the car. So without a market to sell his creation, Frua cancelled the project. The Faena was one of the last works done by Pietro Frua. There was no longer on demand for working concepts and for special one-offs. In 1982, Frua was diagnosed with cancer and he had an unsuccessful surgery in 1982 and sadly he passed away on June 28, 1983. Frua is one of the most underrated designers and coach builders of all time and, from, and hopefully his work would start to be appreciated more in the future. So guys, thank you for watching. See you next time.